<laughs> well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Crucial Conversations. I'm Peter. And I'm Kevin. Now, Kevin, we're going to talk about some big, scary words today. We but always talk about big, scary words. Well, okay, but what's different about these ones is they're ones you hear every day. That I think they're usually thrown around to scare people, too. Like, at least when I hear them, somebody's trying to scare somebody else by using some of these big words. Like boo? That's a small word. Boo. Oh. Boo. But, but that is scary, but it's a small word. These are big words. The two big words we're going to talk about today are modernism uh, and postmodernism. I think everybody's quaking in their boots now. Yes. If they're, if they're wearing boots. I don't know if they're wearing boots. Um, and because this, this episode is likely to create discussion and generate questions, Right off the bat, if you have questions about anything we're said here or in other podcasts, send them to questions at crucialproductions.org or go to our website, crucialproductions.org, and click the little link at the top that says ask a question and fill out the form there. We would love to hear from you, especially if you have questions. Right, Kevin? Yep. <laughs> questions good. I did, I, I did get a question about an episode we did a long, 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 long time ago that will be very interesting to, to talk through, but we're not going to talk about that one right now, but That's it was about a teaser. Yeah. It was about speeding. Oh, and, don't. Yeah. Right. Well, so that, that was part of the question. Yeah. The government, Anyways. the government went out of their way to create signs to tell you the limits of the speed that you're allowed to employ <laughs> while you're going down the road. The fourth commandment tells us to obey those signs. Yeah, but basically, does the fourth commandment have anything to say about modernism and postmodernism? Yes, really, absolutely. So that's, that's actually a segue into this today's topic. Not a good one. Okay, but it is one. It'll work. <laughs> okay, well, take it away then, Kevin. I totally did that by accident. I I like impromptu segues. Well, one of the issues that's inherent in the discussion of modernism and postmodernism is actually one of authority. And since the fourth commandment has a lot to do with authority and the fact that we are created in a natural order, and there's your word, uh, created in an order in which authority is inherent in the systems that we live in, um, postmodernism and modernism both have things to say about that authority Mm -hmm. and have things to say about the legitimacy of that authority. So it does touch, but I don't even know if we're going to get to that part of modernism and postmodernism. <laughs> this is such a broad topic too. So, Well, it's yeah. actually so large that these are the ways that people conceive of all of existence. So not only is it a large topic, it's impossible to define because no one sees the world the same as anybody else are, are we attempting to answer the question of life the universe and everything yeah but i refuse to acknowledge your reference ah but you know it but you know it <laughs> okay carry on so <laughs> modernism is the thing that comes before postmodernism hence the term postmodernism because that's the thing that comes after modernism the pre-modernism might come into this a little bit just because it also exists pre-modernism was the thing before modernism exactly yeah so the best way to think about this is to allow the word philosophy to be valid for a second These oh now are, there's a loaded statement yes we're just gonna leave it though okay uh -huh. continue but modernism Postmodernism and pre-modernism are all philosophical movements or thought patterns that affect the way people have viewed the world and therefore lived out their life in this world. Okay. And these philosophies are usually seen in the way people express themselves. Um, art, music, architecture, this, this pursuit of beauty, um, or in philosophies, which are intellectual pursuits, which describe all the things I just listed. And most importantly in philosophy, 
is usually oriented around some pursuit of truth. And, and that's, did, you, did you mention the meaning of life as something? Because I think trying to search for meaning in this life is part of these things as well, right? Well, that's um, that's quite modernistic of you to say. Um, Ooh, okay. So part somewhere. of the subset of looking for truth is how does truth interact with or even overshadow human existence? And that's part of the debate in all this is whether or not truth is above or below humans. Mm. So this is kind of where this is the place where most conversations about modernism and postmodernism quickly go to. So I guess we will too, even though I didn't want to. But <laughs> Usually, it was my awkward segue forced you to, didn't it? Right off, a little, of the, right a off the bat. Weird, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. No, you're not. I'll I'll try and do better next time. So typically, when people talk about modernism and postmodernism, they talk about it from the the point of view of the existence of truth. Now, if you're listening to this, this is where the scary part comes in, where you're usually trying to scare somebody when you use the terms. If you're listening to this. Forget everything you know about modernism and postmodernism and forget all your presuppositions and your prejudices against one or the other and actually listen for a second. And then you can come back and tell us we're wrong and ask questions. But but yeah. actually listen to the entire explanation before you jump to any conclusions. Yeah, as much as possible, just listen to this for what it for what we're saying without trying to think of everything else that you've heard about this and trust us that we're still Christians. Yeah. Who believe in yeah. Jesus and worship Indeed. him only. Yep. I, I think we're, this is episode 58. I think we have 57 episodes that hopefully have established some credibility in that area. So well, far. at least God's <laughs> faithfulness. Indeed. So, so when you talk about modernism and postmodernism and their view of truth, you have to understand a few things about the concept of truth. And the first thing is, is that neither philosophy, neither in modernism nor postmodernism, deny the existence of truth. They both affirm that truth is a thing. What they okay. disagree on is how do you get to that truth and what is the source of that truth? Do they okay. also disagree on how you how you see it, how you understand it? That's how you get to it. Ah, gotcha. Okay. So I disagree on how you get there, and that disagreement actually results in them describing differently the source of truth. Okay? So, okay. so let's just get this through everyone's head, is that I have listened to a lot of both modern and postmodern speakers, even some post-postmodern speakers, uh, and pre-modern speakers, nobody has ever said to me that there is no such thing as truth. Yeah, in all of those categories. Well, they never say that. Right. What they talk about is that how do humans access truth or how do we experience truth or how do we know truth? And then the big question is who gets to decide the correct way to talk about truth. That's a big issue Ah, in all of those philosophies, not just, not just postmodernism or modernism, but also pre-modernism. There is a big issue of who gets to say this is truth and nobody gets to argue with that. Well, and I, and I don't know where, where the ancient classic philosophers fall, if they're pre-modern or if they're even before that, but even Plato and Aristotle and Socrates, as you read them, they're having this discussion too in the in the same sort of way the same sort of questions trying to work through this in some ways this is why socrates if you believe plato's account of it this is why socrates was um finally tried and found guilty of subverting the youth because he was asking these kinds of questions hmm. and yeah in so doing he was challenging the assumptions of the day but but that's a whole other story and another yeah. podcast that <laughs> We could maybe do some time when you get an expert on Plato on or something like that. That'd be fun. Not really, but we could <laughs> we could pretend it'd be fun. I like Plato. It's squishy, and you can eat it. You can eat some of it, but not not when it's talking about Socrates. You can't. 
Oh, okay. So let's get back to modernism. So, so everyone knows modernism or they think they do. And modernism is this in a philosophical realm. Modernism teaches that truth is objective and absolute meaning that it is something that exists outside of external exertion. It's just, it's just a thing that exists, right? There is truth out there. Mm -hmm. And then the question is, how do you get to truth? How do you learn truth? How do you understand truth? How do you pursue truth? And modernism's answer is you do it through the human intellect. The scientific method is one. specifically yeah. the scientific method. Yeah. Okay. So modernism is all about the idea that the way for humans to access truth, which is a thing that exists out there somewhere is through the human intellect, specifically in the scientific method. And I think it should also be noted. It's exclusively through the human intellect. That that is the tool that you use. There is no other. There is no other tool that you use to access truth or to discover. It is only your human intellect. Nothing else is valid in this search. Is that correct? Well, well, mm, no, <laughs> yes, but no. Um, remember, the human intellect is the most reliable way to access this truth. Okay. You can access it through art and other things. But it's going to be those things as the human intellect drives them. Okay. But either now, way, it's the human who is the critical factor in this. Okay. So you're trying to make a different point. So, oh, okay. okay. Gotcha. Let's just keep it very simple. So there is truth. There is truth out there. And the way humans access that truth is through intellect, especially through the scientific method. Now, what that means is as humans learn, we are necessarily getting closer and closer to truth and therefore progress is inherently good. Yeah. Okay. We actually, we hear this a lot in our culture, how we've right. progressed and how we've grown. And then the surprise when something happens that doesn't look like progress and we're like, oh, we thought we grew beyond that. I mean, look at, look at the news around you. You can, you can see this worldview and, this philosophy and, and you can hear it in the rhetoric of of politicians um it's for the it's for the greater good it's for the betterment of society it's yeah. for the it's for progress right well it's okay if we sacrifice that because overall it's for progress right we're all moving forward and this we're all goal oriented okay? medical progress scientific progress technological progress all these ideas even philosophical progress which is ironic yeah. <laughs> Yep. Okay, so that's really modernism. Now, remember, modernism is the reaction against pre-modernism. Pre-modernism said, basically, that truth exists and only God can explain to us that truth. Okay, mm -hmm. so truth existed in a spiritual sense and the human intellect could not really access truth. We had to rely on God and God was the arbiter of that truth to us. So modernism is actually the reaction against that where they said, yes, there's truth, but we don't need to rely on God and the traditions to get there. We can find new ways within ourselves to gain truth, to access truth and to experience truth. Yeah. God that's, isn't necessary at all. That's modernism. Okay. Modernism was the first one to say humans can experience truth without God. Mm. Now that's a huge thing. And so that, yeah, <laughs> that should actually scare people right so there. <laughs> that's um, if you're, if you're paying attention, that's not good. Right. That's bad. Okay. Postmodernism comes along and says, okay, what if there is a truth out there? What if it actually is absolute and objective? You would never know because the way humans access that truth through their intellect is never objective and never absolute. Actually, everything a human does is always filled with presuppositions and subjectivity. So even the scientific method, which is the only means that you're saying we have to access this absolute truth, even the scientific method is covered with presuppositions 
and subjective ideas. I decide the experiment that I want to run to try to prove my hypotheses. There's nothing in that that's objective. That's all one, subjective. I think one of my favorite questions that kind of gets at this, that that shows how this is the case, is somebody says, well, I'm going to use a scientific method to, to figure out this thing over here. And you just ask, well, why? Why right. do you want to figure that out? And, and why right did there, you choose that over the other yeah, thing? Yeah. Why did you choose that? Why? Or, or we often hear... Well, newscasters, um, you know, back in the 70s and the 60s when you had real objective news being put out, that was when it was objective. But you just ask, well, why did they choose that story to tell? Why did they choose that fact to share and they didn't choose this fact over here? They're, they're, all, they're constantly making choices of what they're going to say, how they're going to say it, all, all this kind of stuff that shows, wait, no, this actually isn't objective they're they're making choices when you ask this question why are they doing it that way why are they saying that you're actually getting to the inherent subjective nature of it so postmodernism simply says don't fool yourself into thinking any of this is objective and absolute all of this is simply interpretations of people and as we know every time a person is involved in any pursuit that person's involvement necessarily changes the pursuit itself and introduces presuppositions and subjectivity into the equation. So what postmodernism came and said is whether or not there's truth out there is not the argument that the, the point of postmodernism is there is no such thing as absolute and objective experience. Instead, everything humans do is through presuppositions and subjectivity. Now, listen, it does not say that truth is subjective. It says humans are subjective. That's different. Okay. So pure postmodernism is not making a judgment on truth. It's simply making a judgment on how we experience truth as humans. That's that's different than what I normally hear. I right. mean, usually what I hear is, you know, truth is relative and it's subjective. And this is what we learned from postmodernism. And actually, that's not really what postmodernism was trying to accomplish. What they're trying to accomplish is saying, all you people saying this is all objective. Here's postmodernism's re- answer, reaction. Nuh-uh. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's just postmodernism is one giant no to nope. modernism. Nuh-uh. There, it doesn't actually contribute or move forward. Oh, wait, there's that progressive modernist right. word See, again. Right. it doesn't but, actually progress. <laughs> well, it, so, it doesn't, it, yeah. So it doesn't give you anything is, afterwards. It just takes away everything from you. So what happens is, is that postmodernism is basically a giant philosophical nah to modernism. But it doesn't fill in the gaps with anything. It doesn't say instead of humans with truth, we're going to find, we're going to go back to the divine or something like that. It doesn't do that. It just leaves you with the rejection of of modernism now that's why most people when they talk about postmodernism, are actually moving into what's called deconstructionism okay that's deconstructionism another big word. that's also a scary word not really it's actually a fun word <laughs> okay let me say people use it as if it's a scary word not to me so deconstructionism is simply the observation that Even the words that you are using to describe all these isms are words that people made up to describe things from their point of view. So every single time that any human has an interaction with another human, it is necessarily going to require interpretation. And that interpretation is not founded on any absolute or objective ideas, but simply founded upon the interpretation of multiple other interpretations. Okay, you're going to have to run that by me again. Doesn't that help? That was a lot of interpretations, and I'm not sure how to interpret what you just said. So here's deconstructionism. <laughs> it's this simple. Everything is a text, and every text requires interpretation. Okay. So when you talk to somebody, that's a text. Okay. It's not a written text. It's an oral text. And every single part of that interaction requires interpretation. 
So we talk about this in different ways in America. We'll say, well, you know, body language is 90% of communication, which is why texting is so hard when you're trying to be sarcastic or something. You've got to use emojis or something like that. And smileys. Yeah. And smileys. Because we say, well, I could tell even though you said you were not mad at me, your body language told me you were really upset. And so all you're doing is you're interpreting. And wait, in that wait. case, you're actually not even interpreting the words. You're interpreting something else that drives your understanding of words. Are, are you saying that postmodernism makes or deconstructionism makes the most Lutheran move ever by asking, what does this mean to oh, everything? Stop it. Stop it. We're, what? Not there, we're not there yet. Oh, but I thought of that. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, th- fine. Keep going. So what happens is <laughs> deconstructionism and other isms that come along after postmodernism are trying to contribute something, this is going to sound strange, positive to the conversation because postmodernism is just saying no to the notion that humans can access absolute truth and objective truth objectively or absolutely. And postmodern says, no, you can't because you're just manipulating whatever you use to get to truth. So postmodernism says progress is not necessarily a good thing. Postmodernism says objectivity is is a falsehood. Postmodernism says that humans cannot be objective because we're always full of presuppositions. Deconstructionism comes along and says, now, every single thing you do is an interpretation. And all of your interpretations are based on prior interpretations. And all of your interpretations that are based on prior interpretations are building to provide for the next interpretation. Okay? I so what that down means a rabbit hole of interpretations. Every single interaction is simply a series of interpretations based on absolutely nothing other than other interpretations. That's deconstructionism. Now, lest you turn off the podcast and go do something else. <laughs> where does this leave us? And this is the point of this podcast. Yeah. This leaves us in utter despair. Because humans cannot describe or define truth. Truth is something that is revealed to us by God. What that means is. It doesn't matter what human philosophy you are subscribing to. It will necessarily drive you away from truth. Did you hear that? Mm. It doesn't matter what human philosophy you subscribe to. It will necessarily drive you away from truth. So pre-modern, modern, modern, post-modern, any of those are actually going to drive you away from truth. Yes. Now... The reason all this is important to talk about, though, is because this will help you understand how people are thinking and talking around you. Okay. Okay. Not so you can make fun of them and say, oh, you're a modernist, but so you (laughs) simply understand where they're coming from and why they're making statements like, well, it helps us progress and that's good. And you go, where did that idea come from? That progress is good. You go, oh, I know where that is. I know exactly where that's from, right? Or someone says, oh, all truth is relative. And you go, that's a strange thing to say. And you go, oh, okay, I know where you're getting that from. Now, it doesn't mean that postmodernism says truth is relative. What it means is this is how people reflect on these kind of ideas and how they try to make them practical in their own lives. They say, oh, what that means is for me, truth is relative. And you go, well, that's just weird, but okay. (laughs) Good luck with that. Yeah, good luck with that. So, yeah, actually, yeah. we don't believe in luck, so it won't help either. But well, so, I'm what we're getting to in this podcast, in exactly. <laughs> what we're getting at in this podcast is that it is not the job of a Christian, it is not the vocation of the Christian or the calling of the Christian to decide which of these human philosophies is right or which one's more friendly to Christianity or which one's which is antithetical to Christianity or which one we can live with or which one we have to fight against. No, the reality is they're all wrong because they're all based on human thought and human ideas. And I think that's that's a critical point because throughout this entire first half of the episode or however long this ends up being, God hasn't come into this. 
Jesus hasn't come into this. And that in and of itself, if you guys have been listening to us for a while, should kind of trigger something. Wait, Jesus isn't involved in this. And That's a sign that, hey, um, maybe none of this is actually the way things are because Jesus hasn't even come into it. Exactly. Well said. And and the point is, even when God comes in, it's not the God of the scriptures. It's the God of philosophy. It's, yeah, that's why I switched to Jesus yeah, halfway it's, through. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> it's this idea of God. It's not the God that who reveals himself through the personal work of Jesus Christ for the salvation of of sinners. It's it's the idea of God as a source of truth or the idea of a divine being as one who controls things or doesn't exist or whatever, right? So yeah. what we're talking about is when you read about postmodernism or modernism and the author is going to take a stand and say, oh, I think postmodernism is the worst thing in the face of the earth. You say, okay, that's fine. Or say, <laughs> oh, I think modernism is, is the savior of the world. You go, uh, no, I know the savior and it's not modernism. Right. Or if they say, oh, modernism is terrible and we need to go back to pre-modernism or post-modernism is the answer to all of our, our problems. You say, no, no, no that's none never of these been things the case. are. Right. We don't, has, we don't look to humans as the answer to anything. So this is so important to us. Um, and here's Probably the, the most, thing. The most common one I hear, which I think should be thrown in here, is postmodernism is destroying the church. Exactly. I think and, that's that's probably the one most of us encounter most frequently, that if you let postmodernism in, it's going to destroy the church. Yeah. And so we just kind of end up in this reality in which we're fighting against philosophies in order to make room for the gospel. So a hmm. lot of people think it's our job to get rid of the world to get to rid the world of postmodernism and deconstructionism and say, Oh, these young kids, they're crazy talk, you know? And, and so then a lot of times what we do is we fall back into the trap of modernism would say, Oh, you say there is no truth. Well, we, I say there is absolute truth. And we're really just arguing human philosophies. I we, think, we define God as objective truth. Right. And then we start so, saying crazy things about God, which aren't, right. aren't really what he reveals about himself. <laughs> because we're borrowing philosophical terms and trying to make them fit Christianity. So one, one of the weird. weird reasons that Crucial Productions started way back in the day was that Peter and I were having these kind of conversations about philosophies. And we were noticing how people have a tendency of fighting against postmodernism by running to modernism. Yeah. And just review for a second what we said about modernism. Modernism is the teaching that there is truth out there that humans can access through their intellect. They don't need God. They simply access it through their intellect. Now, no confessing Christian could advocate that worldview because we believe, teach, and confess that Jesus is the truth and that the truth of God is revealed to us in the person and work of Jesus Christ, in the Holy Scriptures, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not in the scientific process. And it's that word revealed. Right, it's, it's revealed. Yeah. Revealed is the critical word in that one. If we're going to... that That's the important one. <laughs> not, so, not objective, not absolute, not subjective, but revealed. That's, so I just happened yeah. to go to church yesterday. Hey, I did too. Because it was Sunday and I do that every week. Well, yes. As I encourage all of our listeners to. Indeed. And this is what the reading was. First Corinthians chapter two. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling and my speech, my message were not in plausible words of wisdom. Okay. Ooh. Now, here's what's going on. That sounds like a philosophical move. Exactly. There were people walking around in Paul's day who made a living by going to, from town to town and dazzling people with their ability to speak. And what they would do is they would dazzle people with, with wise sounding words and the newest philosophies, and they would say all kinds of crazy word games. And people would pay to listen to this, and then they would 
kind of just make stuff up to make people happy and pay them money. And then they move to the next town. Well, so Paul comes teaching Jesus Christ and him crucified and brings a whole, quote, new teaching to town. And people accuse him of being one of these traveling sophists, one of these people who just walk around sounding wise. And Paul is actually saying here, and he says at other places in the Corinthian correspondences, no, uh-uh. I did not come to you with human <laughs> philosophies. I did not come to you with worldly wisdom. I did not come to you in order to sound wise. I proclaim Christ and him crucified. And and to our listeners, this is really what the church has always been about, is that when the church existed in, in the very first century, right after Christ died and rose, the Greek philosophy of the day was very popular, and there was a there was a bunch of dualism going on, where people saw good and evil as being equal powers, and there was um, the flesh was bad and the spirit was good, and and all kind of stuff. There was there was Platonism and Neoplatonism, and all kinds of mysticism going on. All these isms, right? <laughs> Lots of them. Yeah. Well, guess what? The New Aristotelianism. Testament. Aristotelianism. Aristotelianism. Yes. And which is basically logic is God. Um, yeah. Okay. Which is still around today. Ah. So, <laughs> in the midst of all that, the New Testament proclaims Christ. It doesn't say, well, this philosophy is right or better than that one. It simply proclaims Christ. And it actually says that it's foolish to the world. Yeah. And when we which, do this, which is a contrast to that philosophical wisdom in, in one way. So, we're not trying to be wise. Yeah. So, Obviously, I've read a lot about this. I've I've learned a lot about this. So we're not saying to avoid it. But what we're saying is don't look at any of these philosophies and think that they're actually going to teach you truth. They're simply going to teach you how humans have talked about this pursuit of truth throughout our history. And I think what's been helpful for me in all these conversations we've had over the years is not only ha have has it taught me to see things in that way. But it's also taught me that when I hear these things, I don't need to be afraid that Christianity is going to be destroyed by any of this. Because when you recognize that these are human philosophies, these are things that we have come up with on our own to try and describe the world around us. Well, my God, Jesus transcends all of that, is above all of that. And you can't destroy him by having an idea that maybe nobody ever had before by having an idea that claims to destroy him doesn't actually destroy him and his work. But and if that's, that's been freeing for me. So when I'm hearing these, I don't hear them with fear. Um, now they're, yeah, I guess I, I just, I'll just stop right there. I don't, I don't hear it with fear anymore. I'm not worried about it. So, that's very good. And that's, that's really helpful because that's exactly right. We don't need to fear these things. Someone calls and says, Oh, the latest philosophy is that, you know, we're going to all become machines and that's how we're going to cheat death. And you kind of go, huh? Okay. Well, if we're going to talk about death and overcoming it, can I tell you about the story I know about a guy who actually did that? Yeah. And this is the point is I want you guys to listen for these discussions and see them as opportunities to enter into a conversation in which these people who are advocating these points of view are actually opening doors for you to explain to them your faith. I was, I was, um, you can listen to my Bible class if you want to. It's also on crucial productions, but this Sunday in Bible class, someone brought up a bumper sticker that said, I'm agnostic. Convince me otherwise or something like that, right? It was, like, it was weird. And <laughs> Until like, you convince me otherwise. Yeah, and it's like, what do, you, what do you do with that? And I said, that's an opportunity. Somebody just said, I'm interested in a conversation about God, right? Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we walk into that conversation and tell them about God? If people say, oh, I don't think religion and Paul has anything to do with each other. Say, you want to discuss religion? Great. Right. So yeah. you say, well, I don't think there's anything. There is such thing as absolute truth. Truth is just subjective. And you say, wow, you're interested in truth. Can we discuss I, truth? I Can I tell guy. you about truth? I'm going to use your net, your line. I know a guy. Right. I know a guy <laughs> who had the audacity to stand on this world and said, I am truth. 
Yeah. I mean, he had the audacity to say that. You know, let we can tell the story of our Savior Jesus, who actually did say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he didn't just say it. He backed it up because they nailed him to a cross. And they said, you think you're truth? You're nothing. And they killed him. And three days later, he rose again, and he walked into those same disciples that he told he was the truth. And he said, peace I give to you. Hmm. And they looked at him and Thomas fell on his face before Jesus. And he said, my Lord and my God. See, that's truth. The one who conquers death in the grave, the one who defeats sin, death, and the devil, the one who spoke this world into existence and still exists today as the almighty God. That's truth. And the amazing good news that we have to share with this world is that all-powerful, almighty, eternal God loves you. He knows everything you've ever done. He knows that you don't believe in him. He knows that you've lived your life according to your will and not his. He knows that you don't even care that he created the world. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you to rise again, to defeat sin, death, and the devil and the grave for you and eternal life is freely given to you through Jesus. That's the conversation we can have. See, and 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 here's the thing. It, don't get caught up in philosophies. Simply move the conversation to who God truly is. And I just want you to listen to this just for a second. You can follow along if you've got the book. It's in Isaiah. Okay, and this is Isaiah 40 through 55. What happens in Isaiah is that Israel is going to go into captivity in Babylon, right? This is this is in Jeremiah, this is in the prophets. Is that because of their sin, God is going to send the Babylonians to destroy Judah and Jerusalem and take the people captive. This is in the book of Habakkuk, if you want to listen to Habakkuk in five. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And what happens is Babylon comes and destroys Jerusalem. Babylon is a very bad, bad word to say into a microphone, but <laughs> the Chaldeans, which is a different word for that, that nation, they destroyed Jerusalem and they marched the people of Jerusalem back to Babylon. And here's the point. And they said, where is your God? Because our gods are here and your God and his temple are gone. Yeah, this the sign back then to all the other pagan religions was if the temple was destroyed, that God himself was destroyed. And, and if your army is successful, your God is more powerful than the people you defeated. Yeah. So now, yeah. now what I want you to listen to, that's a philosophy. That's the prevailing philosophy of the day is since we beat you, our God is better than your God. And since our God's temple is standing and yours is a pile of rebel, then our God defeated your God. That's called human philosophy. And the Israelites were tempted to believe the human philosophy of the Babylonians. What God says in Isaiah 40 to 55 is don't believe it don't mm. listen to them listen to me because i am eternal hear O israel the one who created you listen O jacob the one who formed you i have called you by name and you are mine i have redeemed you when you walk through the waters i'll be with you when you walk through the fires, they will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Okay, so what he's saying is don't listen to what humans are teaching you. Listen to what God is saying and learn to interpret the world, not through human philosophies or human perceptions or human intellect, but learn to see all human history through how God explains it. And he says, God says that he is the one who created us in love, the one who redeems us in love, and the one who will raise us up on the last day 
in love. And all of that is accomplished through our Savior, Jesus Christ. That is the truth. That's not a truth that anybody made up. It's not a truth that you can learn through your intellect. It's a truth that God reveals to us through his word, in his son, by his spirit. And whether you're talking pre-modernism, modernism, post-modernism, either way, that is the crucial conversation. Well, you guys probably have questions after that. Please send them to us. <laughs> we questions that crucial. Yeah, um, we, we've we've opened up a whole new air, a whole new topic, a whole new subject that we haven't gotten into yet. We know there is more to discuss. Please send us your questions. We'd love to continue discussing that. Uh, questions at crucialproductions.org or go to our website crucialproductions.org and the link at the top. Ask a question. Thanks for sticking with us this far. We'll see you next time. See ya.